look at uh, the SOA session. So let's get started with SOA. The SOA stands for a service oriented architecture. We would have known that. So it's basically an architectural pattern. It's a concept. Uh, it's nothing more than that. And it's the one I would say is that it's nothing uh, which is born uh, new. It's it was already there. It's just that they have uh, uh, standardized the concepts and they have given a new name to it. Uh, otherwise, it was already uh, it was already there. People were using it, but they didn't uh, put everything into place and everything was not uh, regularized or uh, standardized. So SOA has br brought about the definition, the concepts, the governance model, the tools that it requires. So all that forms uh, the architecture and uh, it's basically trying to solve the age-old problem of developing uh, enterprise applications. Uh, most of uh, before the past decade we would have developed a lot of applications which are uh, uh, like web applications on the JTW application layer and uh, it would be mostly uh, a standard on application wherein we would not have integrated much uh, things. So when we go for wider perspective uh, of solving a, a, a various business uh, uh, operations or the business processes that needs to be solved, we would uh, require to develop systems that uh, that shares and talks across uh, the systems that are developed in various departments within an organization. So, so SOA what it does is it identifies and uh, uh, it identifies the services at uh, at a, uh, at a process level and then uh, it tries to uh, uh, decouple those services and uh, make them it first identifies the services that need that is uh, uh, which can be reused or which can be say standalone a reusable unit of work it tries to identify that and then uh, it, by doing that it uh, decouples one from other that way it is going to be easily integratable and uh, uh, it can work with each other and uh, the basic criteria behind uh, SOA working is the service orchestration. Service orchestration is the main backbone that makes SOA work. SOA is a concept, so what we are trying to achieve out of SOA is service orchestration. We uh, that's a, a practical uh, uh, in in practical terms, a service orchestration is the one which we are trying to achieve by following the SOA practices. So we will see what uh, service orchestration uh, and uh, is all about. So the backbone of SOA is a service. So what a service is? So a service is nothing but it's is a self-contained reusable piece of uh, software. So whichever can be uh, defined uh, and then uh, that partic a particular task should be uh, executable by a, a small program. So that that is going to be a service. It's it's analogous to what we call in the class. A class becomes good, uh, becomes uh, perfect when we are able to contain the class to a particular functionality or particular task that a class will be able to carry out. So in the similar way, service is also uh, a unit of work that can be uh, self-contained and uh, which can uh, be reused uh, uh, across uh, functionalities. So that's a service and uh, which achieves some purpose a, in the business terms. So this service can be, uh, this service will be having an interface exposed and the communication with this service will be through that interface and the implementation of the service is going to be hidden from the external world. So that when we want to change it, we are going to change the implementation. Uh, and uh, the other applications wouldn't even know that the service at the back had changed because it's going to always deal with that service through the interface. So on a, on a whole, it's uh, this is how the definition goes, it's a self-contained reusable unit of software uh, which can execute a particular task. So here for example, I have given that it, retrieving your bank account uh, balance is one example of a service. It's, uh, so this is uh, retrieving your bank account balance is one particular functionality, uh, that's it. So this will be self-contained and we can use this functionality wherever we need this particular service, wherever we need to retrieve the bank account balance of a particular user, we would be able to use this uh, service. Okay then, so what service orchestration is all about? Service orchestration is nothing but integrating more than one service 
and uh, making uh, 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 you know in trying to automate a particular process if there is a business process um, let's say here an example I've given it's an insurance claim application if it's a claim application then uh, we need a set of uh, steps that needs to be carried out for this operation to be done so these set of tasks that needs to be carried out ca should be divided into different services which are all uh, self-contained and which can be plugged into uh, which can be plugged into various functionalities so in this case it's an insurance claim application so let's assume there are four activities that we have one is we need to search the customer next is we need to check whether the claim that is there is a valid one and third is we want to check the balance fourth is we want to debit the balance uh, if the claim is valid so these are the four activities that we are going to do so so this this orchestration is going to be done by the SOA based platform whatever you uh, decide it can be uh, uh, it can be a custom built uh, platform uh, custom built application following the SOA concepts or it can be an ESB which uh, is going to orchestrate this whole process it can be anything wherever but at last the thing is yeah, the, the the platform that you are building should be able to uh, should be uh, capable of allowing services to be plugged into it and uh, should be capable of uh, making these services talk to each other making these services to be invoked in a uh, platform agnostic manner and also it should be capable of uh, uh, it, this should be capable of uh, uh, talking to distributable service it's not that each service has to be deployed in the same server or uh, in the same server or the same organization each service can come from different geography, different organizations, and different platforms and different services. So the SOA-based integration platform, the below box that we see, that thing should be able to, whichever a product or tool that we decide, or it's going to be a custom developed one, that should be a, uh, capable of all these uh, functionalities. Um, so here in the case, so when a client comes to the SOA, um, when a client sends a request, so it, these four services are going to be orchestrated in the sequence of activity, uh, in the sequence that we have pre-configured it. So each service would provide its own data, uh, and then uh, it will not even know why why the data is being sent. What is the next activity? These are all four different services which are just plugged into it to. Uh, solve a particular problem here in the case it's to solve the uh, uh, it, here in the case it is to adjudicate the claims process uh, process the meaning uh, to process a particular claim that has come to the system so so th this is a, a very high level overview of what a service orchestration is about and all that we are going to do uh, going forward in ESB is when we actually go into Mule ESB and start developing the applications. It will be service orchestration that we are uh, doing. Okay. Next, we'll see uh, what is the role of XML in SOA. At last, when we talk about SOA, we need uh, some common uh, platform or the language or the format that each application needs to talk to. Um, so that it is able to exchange information and share information across so that happens to be XML and that uh, and the other thing is XML and web services everything was available before the SOA concept uh, was uh, coined let's say uh, web services was already available and people were using it and XML was a de facto standard for that but uh, when we uh, talk about SOA and the concepts that it is trying to do and the things that it is trying to achieve, XML became a de facto thing because it is already a proven technology when SOA came into picture. So it plays a huge role. But right now, we also have this uh, JSON and the RESTful web services that has taken over, whichever, whatever I have seen. Uh, most of the organizations, we are moving towards RESTful web services and JSON because SOAP seems to be somewhat heavy and uh, it's somewhat complicated and uh, difficult. So JSON and RESTful has become more simpler, the, the data format is simpler, the way we write the applications have become simpler, and the tools that are supporting it has also improved. Uh, but still, XML uh, happens to be the king, and uh, mostly we are using uh, SOAP web services, and we use the visuals as well. So, so as based all upon uh, open standards, uh, as we discussed earlier as well, 
and uh, those open standards are the uh, main driving factor behind uh, uh, driving this uh, platform independent stuff since uh, yeah, since it is not vendor specific, it's uh, like W3 standard, it's just a open standard which other vendors have to implement it, just like the J2W standards. So that's what is promoting this uh, platform independent uh, stuff. So uh, you, once we have to do that to go in practical terms, we need a, a language or a data format that we uh, that can be exchanged across uh, systems uh, which talk different languages. That happens to be XML because it's the simplest one which we can get. It's uh, nicely uh, structured. It's uh, text based, and uh, yeah. So these are the two uh, two factors basically. It's structured, and then it it can be uh, uh, it it can have a schema to it. It can have a rule to it, um, and then uh, and it's text based. So these are the reasons going for the XML. It's simple, and. Uh, it has given a, a, a birth to multiple standards. We have this SOAP and uh, Vizdel, uh, which are the key uh, behind uh, having this web services going. Um, it's the same XML resolves the challenge of working with different data formats. That's fine. As a benefits or a ease of representation. And it can be extended as well. So we have come to the SOAP. These are uh, simple things which we know already. Uh, SOAP is going to be the XML based uh, protocol. It's a message uh, messaging protocol. Uh, on the SOAP level, so we would be able to uh, transport messages in the SOAP protocol and that's going to be, uh, since it is based on XML, uh, it's platform independent. It, it can be uh, sent over HTTP protocol, so it's, it can be done over internet and uh, it's easily readable as well. And uh, Wisdel, Wisdel is the one which uh, uh, forms the backbone of any web service. So it's going to have uh, 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 the services defined. It's going to have the data types of uh, attributes defined. It's going to uh, have the protocol and uh, the URL that needs to be used to consume the service. So all that information is going to be in the Wisdel document, and that's an XML-based uh, document. So XML plays a huge role in SOVA, that's what we're trying to say. But uh, uh, recently, whatever I've seen, at least heard and then talked to people, it's uh, JSON that's taking over uh, as they find XML is somewhat more uh, uh, complicated and then uh, heavy than and verbose as well. It's more uh, uh, content. So uh, uh, JSON has is trying to replace it and RESTful web services are definitely taking a huge advantage over the SOAP web services. Okay. Now uh, we saw the role of XML uh, in SOA. Now we'll see what's the role of web services in SOA. As we know, uh, web services was in place before even SOA was born and uh, SOA had a, a good companion in web services because whatever it is trying to achieve, it's at last, uh, it is able to do that using uh, web services and the JMS uh, stuff. Um, at, at last everything is based on the services strategy. That's why it was able to, the concept was able to uh, be uh, realized so easily because the web services were already in place, it was already uh, developed. So the SOA concept was soon realized as soon as it came. People were able to apply that concept in practical terms using web services and uh, the JMS. Web services, uh, they enforce standard again, it follows standards, it follows XML standard, it follows SOAP and WSDL. Uh, so whenever uh, open standards are followed, it definitely improves uh, more interoperability and uh, it, it can be, it also in, uh, 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 is portable, so it can be used by different applications. Uh, it's cross-platform cross, cross -platform and cross-language because it's text-based and it's uh, uh, widely supported. There are already organizations who have taken up uh, this web services way of uh, writing their applications. So SOA became an uh, easier concept to adopt for those organizations. For all those organizations who did not do it, the SOA platform or the tool, whatever they developed, was uh, was the building was a uh, basic building block in developing the web services. And it's message oriented. That's what is very important just like a service the word message is very very important provide faster uh, tooling support 
which needs the implement. So when SOA came in, web services was already available in different. Uh, there was different service service providers who were providing that uh, web service engines to develop web services. So we were able to implement it. So the role of web services is is a huge role, and that's what makes this uh, thing practically possible. And uh, the basic SOA architecture. Uh, this is how it looks. So you have a service consumer, you have a service provider and a service directory. Service provider is the one who is providing you service. It's The services are hosted there. In center we have the services. So all these services are provided by a service provider and it has been way to access the service providers. The way to access the services, uh, uh, the service provider has published its services to a service directory. From that's the UDDI. So from there only we try to consume the services. So service consumer will be talking to the service directory, and then it will be able to locate the particular service that is hosted by a, a specific sp service provider, and then try to use it in its own application. So this is how it uh, it works. Basically, these are the different components that uh, uh, is playing a role in a SOA architecture. Yeah, at the center, we have the main things, the reusable services. And some service provider is going to provide it. And the way to locate it is there in the service directory. Service consumer uses both service directory to locate it and then uh, consume the services from the service provider.